Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss uh, a, a topic called map reduce execution part. In the previous classes we have uh, seen uh, the HDFS part. In today's class we are going to see the map reduce part. So HDFS is to store the large amounts of data and map reduce is to process the large data sets that is large amounts of data set that is uh, big data. So how uh, this map reduce program will use will actually gets executed all those things i'm going to cover in today's session so if you observe the slide uh, here uh, there are uh, there is a one master machine and many slaves there is one master machine and there are n number of slaves okay in master, the, I'm, I'm try, I'm, I have given in such a way that the name node service as well as the job tracker is are running. In slave meshes, the data node and task trackers are running. TT stands for task tracker, DN is data node. So we already discussed what is name node and what is data node. So uh, these two services belongs to HDFS part. Coming to this job tracker and task tracker, these two are the services which belongs to the map reduce part. Okay, here job tracker service is a master service, whereas task tracker is a slave service, which belongs to the mass map reduce part. Okay, I assume that the data is already stored in the slave machines. Now, this data I'm going to process by writing a map reduce program. So, I assume that the data has been distributed among these machines. Uh, the given input file is divided into four blocks. And the primary replicas are stored in these four blocks. I, I didn't uh, specify the replicas and all here uh, for simplicity's sake. So the given input uh, data, input file or input uh, data or data set is distributed among these four machines using HDFS part. We have already seen this, how to distribute the data, how to store the big data. So I assume that it is already stored. B1 is stored in slave machine 1, B2 is stored in 3, B3 is stored in 4, similarly B4 is stored in slave machine 7. Okay. Now, uh, to process this data which is stored in these slave machines, uh, as a user or as a programmer, I will be writing a map reduce program. Assume that I have written a map reduce program in such a way that this program will process this data. Okay. I, I am not specifying what kind of program, what kind of application I am going to develop. Okay. I am no way concerned about that now. I, at high level, I am explaining how the map reduce job will be executed by the services. Okay, friends. Fine. Now, as a user or as a programmer, I will be writing a map reduce program and I will be submitting that program to a client machine. Assume this is a client machine. This is a client machine. Okay, uh, as a user, I have submitted the map reduce program. So, user has submitted the map reduce job or program to the client. Here, we can call either a program or a job, both are same. Okay, uh, the client will receive that program, and this client is a responsible person to send that to a to the job tracker the client will send this map reduce program to job tracker why only to job tracker why not to the name node because name node is no way concerned here name node belongs to hdfs part the job tracker belongs to the uh, map reduce part and he is the master in the map reduce part who are who is the master in map reduce part job tracker who is the slave task tracker so the map reduce job execution request will be given to the job tracker here now, the job tracker is the sole and whole person who, who has to execute this map reduce program by taking help of the its slave uh, service that is task tracker. Now, uh, in order to execute this map reduce program, this program needs the input data. This program needs the input data. That input data is residing in these slave machines. I have assumed that the input data is residing in these slave machines. So, now tell me friends, how come this job tracker knows where does this data has been stored? How come this job tracker knows where the data which this program needs is residing? This is a question. Can anyone answer this? 
Yes, the job tracker doesn't know where the data is residing in the slave machines, but the job tracker can communicate with the name node for the same. The job tracker, who knows that which which block of uh, input file is stored is stored in which slave node? The name node knows everything. No, he'll be the name node will be maintaining the metadata. In that metadata, everything will be written. We have seen that part also in the previous classes. So the job tracker will communicate with the name node for what it will communicate with the name node friends to know the the job tracker will communicate with the name node for what purpose it will communicate to with the name node to know the uh, locations of the data blocks for that part the job tracker will be communicating with the name node now the name node the job tracker will send a request to the name node asking like hey name node i want to execute so and so map reduce job for that the input file the input file blocks are stored in some data nodes but i don't know where it is stored could you tell me where the data is residing in such a way the job tracker will send a request to the name node now the name node by opening its metadata file it, it comes to know where are the blocks of the particular input file is present so all the block details including the replicas the primary replicas the secondary replicas all the every details of that um, of the blocks will be sent by the name node to the job tracker not only the blocks but also its replicas where the replicas are stored all that information related to that input uh, file or that data set will be sent by the name node to the job tracker now the job tracker has got enough information about the uh, input data where the input data is residing including the replicas also here in this uh, in this in this slide i didn't uh, specify the replicas actually i have specified only the primary block information okay friends now after getting the enough information from the name node the job tracker come now the job tracker knows where the data is residing where the input data is residing in order to execute this map reduce job so uh, the job tracker comes uh, the job tracker knows that in slave machine 1 b1 is residing in slave machine 3 b2 is residing in slave machine 4 b3 is residing in slave machine 7 b4 is residing assume i'm not speaking about the replicas here okay now the job tracker immediately triggers listen carefully now the job track immediately triggers the task tracker services in those in those slave nodes where these blocks are residing in that slave nodes the task trackers will get triggered in b1 there is a task tracker service in b2 also task tracker is there in b3 also task tracker is there in b4 also task tracker is there so the job tracker immediately triggers the task trackers now the task tracker will start its execution it is a service no it is a program it is a daemon which runs in the background so as soon as the job tracker receives the information where the data is residing in that slave machines the task trackers will will be triggered now the task trackers are also in execution data nodes are already in execution in the same slave machine the task trackers also be triggered the data node will be holding enough information about the blocks now we'll see what the task tracker will do okay friends till now any doubts fine now once the task trackers has been triggered in these uh, slave machines the job tracker will send the copy of this map reduce program to all these task trackers how many task trackers has been executing now four task trackers okay so the job tracker will send the copy of the map reduce program to all these task trackers okay the task this task tracker will receive a copy of the map reduce this this one will receive this one will receive and this one also will receive the copy of the map reduce program now this task tracker is a responsible person to execute this map reduce program this task tracker is a responsible person to execute the map reduce program the task tracker will execute this map reduce program by taking help from the data node what kind of help it will take task tracker don't know where the data is residing in the hard disk no but the data node knows where the data is residing in that machine so only the task tracker will communicate with the respective data node for 
data blocks by communicating with the data node the task tracker will execute the map reduce job understand friends how the map reduce execution will be done in the background the uh, user will write the program it will be submitted to the client machine the client machine will send that request to the job tracker the job tracker in turn contacts the name node for the data locations uh, once the job tracker got the enough details about the data locations in those data locations the task tracker has been triggered after triggering the task tracker the job tracker will send a copy of the map reduce to those task trackers now the task tracker will start the execution of the map reduce program by taking help of the respective data nodes okay friends friends one more thing i need to specify here that is in normal traditional programming the data will be sent towards the program the data will be the input data will be sent towards the program but in hadoop the program will be sending towards the data so whatever the program we have written that is map reduce program that program is taken towards the data where the data is residing here in this case the data is residing in uh, slaves like 1 3 the data is residing in slaves 1 3 4 and 7 seventh slaves so the map reduce the job tracker will send the map reduce program towards the data but not the data towards the program that thing is uh, very important in uh, hadoop in normal traditional programming the input data will be sent towards the program whereas in hadoop the program will be sent towards the data that is called data locality it is one of the major feature of the hadoop what is the feature the feature name is data locality data locality means uh, sending the program towards the data is known as data locality is that clear fine now we'll see few more details about this if you uh, observe keenly assume the task tracker is executing the program the task tracker is executing the program now tell me one thing uh, friends how come the job tracker knows that the task trackers are working uh, properly or uh, it, is it working or is it dead or is it crashed something how come the job tracker knows the job tracker needs to know because he is the master and task trackers are the slaves master should know whether the particular task tracker whether, whether the corresponding ta task trackers are working or not how come the job tracker knows it yes through a heartbeat signal similarly uh, in the hdfs part in hdfs part also we have discussed that how come the name node knows whether the particular uh, data node is working properly or not through a signal called heartbeat signal similar in the, in this case also the data node will come to know that sorry the job tracker will come to know that a particular task tracker is working or not through a signal called heartbeat signal every task tracker will be sending a heartbeat signal to the job tracker for every 30 seconds every task tracker which is triggered will be sending a heartbeat signal to the job tracker for every 30 seconds in that way the job tracker comes to know whether the particular task tracker is working or crashed or dead okay fine now assume the task trackers are working properly and those task trackers are executing the map reduce program suddenly one of the task tracker got failed or one of the task tracker the task tracker which is running in a machine got failed in this case i have assumed that the slave machine 3 got crashed i i have assumed that this is a slave machine 3 okay i have just numbered it i have numbered starting from 1 to likewise i have number 3 4 5 6 7 Eight nine. So assume the slave machine three got failed, got crashed. So here in this case, one ta uh, uh, the task tracker is running in this uh, in this node. No, task tracker is running in this node. So the task tracker will also be crashed. So the job tracker comes to know that this particular task tracker has been failed. How? Because the task tracker will not be able to send a heartbeat signal to the job tracker until thirty seconds. 
so after enough uh, period of time the job tracker comes to know that okay this particular slave is not working this task tracker is not working so uh, the ma as a master it has to take an appropriate action the job tracker has to take an appropriate action because the part of the map reduce program has been stopped here because of this failure so now what does this job tracker will do in this case the job tracker immediately do one thing what is that it has enough information like where does this b2 block is residing where does this b2 block he, this is a, this entire slave has been crushed isn't it so uh, the data residing in this machine will also be gone that is b2 block now the job tracker knows the details of the replicas of this b2 block isn't it assume that the b2 block has been stored in slave machine 2 and slave machine 9 the replica of this b2 block has been stored in b2 and b, sorry slave 2 and slave 9 that information job tracker already knew knew how because before i mean at the first the job tracker is requested the name node for for the data location so at the time name node has been sent everything about the data blocks in such a way the job tracker knows everything about the data blocks job tracker knew that the b2 block is residing in this machine as well as in this machine now the job tracker will pick one machine among these two which 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 machine is that if you observe which machine is that it won't pick randomly but uh, the machine which is very closest to this master machine the machine which is closest to this master machine that machine will be picked here actually uh, um, Actually, uh, the B, uh, the slave 2 is nearer, but I have taken slave 9. Uh, it's actually, it's my mistake. Uh, instead of this, this machine is a uh, uh, little uh, nearer to this uh, master machine. You can pick this one. So, uh, this you, can, you, have, you have to pick this one. So, the job tracker will uh, pull one of the slave machines, either slave machine 2 or slave machine 9, because B2 block is residing in that slave machines immediately it triggers the task tracker in that machine it triggers the task tracker in that machine and sends a copy of the map reduce program to the uh, to that task tracker now this tra task tracker will execute the map reduce program by taking help from the corresponding data node okay friends likewise uh, the job tracker will uh, though the task trackers are crashed or dead the job tracker will take an appropriate action for that also how come the job tracker knows whether the task tracker has been failed through heartbeat signals okay friends is it clear so friends that's all for today we will meet in the next video thank you